Hi guys, well we've been talking about the upcoming AMD RX 5500 for many weeks now in the aftermath of Nvidia's flurry of GTX 16 series launches you know, as they scramble to push out as many cards as possible and fill all those gaps. Well the 5500 XT is finally here and today we're going to be checking out this Sapphire Pulse 5500 XT 4 gig card. Now the XT is going to be available in two variants, 4 gig and 8 gig. In AMD Navi's lineup, the 5700 XT is designed for 1440p, and so this new 5500 XT is, as you guessed it, designed to tackle 1080p. If you've seen the pulse under the 5700, then you'll recognize a very similar card, which boasts the Dual X cooling. It also provides extensive cooling for the VRM region and VRAM, all of which we'll be exploring and checking out later in the video. This card here comes with the two years of warranty, and in terms of the pricing for the XT, 4 gig versions start from 169 US and the 8 gig versions start from 179 US. We actually reached out to Sapphire prior to this uh, to obtain pricing for this particular model here. We weren't able to get anything prior uh, you know, in time for filming this video, but you guys can probably expect it for under 200 US. And so that puts it sort of in between the 1650 Super and the 1660, both of which we're actually going to be comparing against this 5500 XT later in the video. Before we get into our review, today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their new flagship Z390 Phantom Gaming X. This new board is packed with features which set it apart from other Z390 boards. It has 802.11ax, otherwise known as Wi-Fi 6, giving you support for that new wireless standard with greater bandwidth as well as providing bi-directional MIMO support. ASRock has given Gaming X a flexible integrated I.O. shield, so you're not going to struggle to fit it into your case. And if you pair this up with the 9900KS, you have a powerful combo. Gaming X is ready for this new CPU, which has a 5GHz turbo boost, comes with 8 cores and 16 threads, giving you that nudge in performance over the standard 9900K. And you can find out more info at the link in the description. Okay, so here is our Pulse. As already mentioned, if you've seen the Pulse 5700, then this will look very familiar. Forming the basis for the card, we have the Dual X cooling, which obviously involves two fans. We'll go into more detail and get a good look at that heatsink and the other elements later on when we detach this from the card. And so that shroud is plastic and has quite a sharp uniform design, but one which is neutral, making it ideal to match up with other hardware. If you're not a fan of the RGB lighting, then you'll be pleased to know that we have none of that present. What you're see is what you get. Now in terms of the size of Pulse, this card is neither large nor small, and so it should fit into a good range of different sized cases. But for those interested, here are those physical dimensions. So for the length, we are looking at around 230mm, for the width you're looking at 108mm, and then the height around 40mm. Pulse comes with a factory overclock which concerns just the GPU boost, not the memory. And just like the 5700, there is no absolute value for the clock speed. The power limit is what determines the range. And so the GPU clock boost can climb up to 1845 MHz and the memory clock operates at 1750. There is a dual BIOS switch on this card which is tucked away and that gives you the performance or quiet mode. Other things to note is that with this card we get the 4GB of GDDR6, the card is also PCI Express 4.0 compliant, is DirectX 12 ready, supports OpenGL 4.6 and Vulkan. Now this card is a double slotter so it will take two spaces up on your board and case. On this back panel we've got the following video outs. We have three DisplayPort 1.4s, those can give you the 8K at 60 and we also have one HDMI 2.0 that offers 4K at 60. And of course, support for FreeSync 2 HDR. Pulse features a single 8-pin connection for the power, and as a minimum, Sapphire are suggesting a 450 watt power supply for this unit. And so, not too demanding at all, and that should make it easy to upgrade to. Over on the back side of the card, we have the large metal backplate, which supports that PCB, preventing it from flexing, and also taking any knocks. And there are pockets of ventilation there to allow the internal components to breathe. Okay, so we've taken the cooler off our card for a closer look at the solution which Sapphire are using. And first of all, we have two 95mm double ball bearing fans. And like other Sapphire cars, those fans are quick connect ready. And so they can be removed after detaching just a single screw, helping to simplify maintenance. Also give you the option there to switch out to a different fan design. 
There isn't much space to play with here, so it can be a bit fiddly. And those fans also use zero decibel technology, and so when you aren't gaming, those fans will stop spinning. Both fans sit on top of this large one-piece heatsink, which uses triple copper heat pipes. The VRM and VRAM heat is distributed via the heatsink, as you can see. And there is a copper base plate in the center for the GPU. Having the heatsink removed also means that we can get a view of the inner workings of this card. And one thing we did notice when looking at the components more closely is the way in which some things have been soldered on an angle. They aren't quite straight. And while this doesn't affect anything, we'd like to see more care taken with the design and construction. Across the board, there is a 7 plus 1 plus 1 digital phase design employed, and Sapphire includes some extras there, such as fuse protection. The driving force behind our 5500 XT is the Navi 14 XTX GPU. Unlike other Navi cards, this one here uses a 7 nanometer process and is based on the brand new RDNA technology. That GPU and the 4 gig of memory means that we have a card here destined for 1080p and something which will go head to head with the GTX 16 series. Okay, well that is our look at the Pulse Complete and now it is time for us to check out the performance by running some games. For this we'll use 1080p and the high detail preset. For comparison we're going to be using the Zotac GTX 1650 Super and the Inno 3D GTX 1660 Twin X2. Both cards are similar in spec and price point. And just to note that GPU-Z does not report the VRAM temperature for the GTX 16 series and so that is why those figures are missing on screen. If you want more games comparison and more cards added to the mix then check out our web review on Vortez.net. Okay, and if we just come out of our last game, we can check out the temperature readings. And there we are, that is our results. Okay, well that is the Sapphire Pulse 5500 XT, and it's been a while since we had a look at anything Sapphire in for review, and I must say that I've been pretty impressed with what I've seen today in terms of build quality features and just overall performance. You know, I really like what uh, Sapphire has done with the shroud on this card. It, uh, it looks great and it also feels really good as well. The ability to switch out those fans is a great idea for maintenance and just to swap out the fans in general. We've got the dual BIOS switch on this card too for performance or quiet mode and even in performance mode this card is very quiet. 
Now we've tested this four gig version. There is an eight gig version, which has that higher frame rate buffer, which will give you the edge really in some titles. It'll also allow you to dial up on the detail preset compared to this four gig version. As you've just seen from the benchmarks, uh, the results place XT in between the 1650 Super and the 1660. A few exceptions though, you know, in some titles. The base MSRP for the 1650 Super is 159, whereas this XT is 169, which isn't exactly competitive. And to stand a chance against the GTX 16 series, AMD should really look at that MSRP and lower the price. We'll of course, guys, be following up with a web review of this card which will be on the screen in the description. Over there we'll be comparing the XT to a bunch of other cards and other games too. But what do you guys think of this new release here? Would you opt for the GTX 16 series or would you settle for this XT here? Cast your vote in the top right corner. A big thanks to you guys for watching today. Please like this video as that really does help out. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing with those notifications enabled. Take care of yourself and I'll catch you guys in the next one.